So last week in my video and also on Instagram, I asked if you guys had any questions about my master's program. And so I figured it might be valuable to talk about my program a little more in depth for those of you guys that have any questions about it. So I wrote down a bunch of questions that you guys asked and I'm gonna be going through those today. Before we get started though, I do wanna give you guys like a little bit of background on me and also why I chose to go into the program just so it makes a little more sense with like my goals and also kind of like my pathway to getting in. First of all, the program is the Master of Science and Analytics program at Georgia Tech. I was an undergraduate student at Georgia Tech as well and I did earn my bachelor's degree there. I got a business administration degree with a concentration in IT management so I still kind of had like a little bit of the technical side. The reason I wanted to do this program was because even though my degree was technical I just wanted like a bit of a deeper understanding of the technical components and also just stronger technical skills as well. So that's why I thought this program would be a great fit for me. So I applied to the program as an internal student and those of you that don't know when you apply as an internal student at least for when I did they do waive the fees so you don't have to pay an application fee. You also don't have to submit your test scores. I think that now it's actually just fully optional for everyone, but I think when I was applying originally, it was not required just for internal students. But if you were an external student, like coming from a school outside of Georgia Tech, you were required to submit those test scores. So just so you know, but I think now it is optional for everyone. So you shouldn't have to submit test scores if you're planning on applying. Also, I do want to preface, I do not know a lot about the international application process, but I can try my best to answer them. If you guys do have any questions about international applications in the comment section, I can definitely try to find your resources to help you get your questions answered, but I don't have really any experience with that. I can still try my best to help you just um, feel free to leave a comment down below. But that's a little bit about me and now we're gonna hop into the questions. How long is the program? So for in-person it'll be about one to two years. You can do the program in one year. Typically students will choose to do it for like a year and a half to two years but it's definitely possible to do it one year. I'm actually getting it done in one year so if you prefer to be done in one year it's definitely possible. For the online cohort it's a little bit different because they cap you at six credit hours initially which is two classes but you can get that increased to 12 hours which is four classes. For the online program it's really up to your discretion when you want to finish. You can take as long as you need to, or you can also move through it quickly if you want. For the online section, it's a lot more common to see people working full-time and then taking classes on the side. So you'll typically find that people in the online cohort take about one to two classes. I've also met some students that are just taking classes and not working, and they're still just taking one to three classes. So it's very normal, and it's, again, like really up to whatever you want to do. I touched on this a little bit last week, but if you're working full-time, I really don't recommend taking more than three classes. I honestly would probably only take at most two if I was working full-time. These classes are very, very work heavy and very time consuming. But if you're not working, if you're a full-time student, I think it's really okay to take more. Like I mentioned before, they allow you to take up to 12 credit hours max for the online cohort per semester. But since I was in person last semester and now I'm online this semester, they were able to honor my graduation schedule. So I am taking five classes this semester. But if you go into the program as an online student, you will be capped at 12 credit hours per semester. So just wanted to make that very clear. Can you explain the different tracks? Absolutely. So I'm gonna put all the links that I'm talking about in the description of this video and I'm also going to pin a comment with all these as well so it's easy to find. For the online cohort, I'm gonna show some screenshots over here. They break it down on this website really well and you can see the different classes for different tracks. You have up to six years to complete it and there are 30 courses offered and as far as I remember, I'm pretty sure that the options for the online program are more limited than the options for the in-person program because I was given a list of courses for the in-person program that had a lot more listed. So the in-person program does give you kind of more flexibility with what classes you can take. For the website talking about the tracks for the online program, you can see that there's like a drop down for every single track so you can see every class that you have to take. I'm not gonna talk about each individual one just because it'll take a really long time but if you're interested in seeing the curriculum for each of the tracks this is the website to go to. This has everything you need. For the in-person program I am actually gonna show you the breakdown because I don't know if this is posted anywhere online um, but it's very very useful and so I do want to show you this. I was given this course planner and I'm gonna put it up on the screen for you. You kind of just can mix and match with whatever you want to take. It tells you which ones are required and then it also tells you which ones you can kind of pick and choose from. You'll see some boxes that say like S or pick a class from C or S and those are basically your elective classes so once you're in the program they will give you a huge list of courses for the semester and you can choose whatever courses are applicable to that elective and that list of courses does change periodically so every semester you will see some new courses on there or see some old courses taken off. Each track is pretty closely related I would say especially for the A and the C track so what track you end up on is only the difference of like maybe one or two classes. I was undecided about my track for a really long time but I ended up on the C track because I took one class that was C track specific that I really wanted to take and that just put me on the C track so feel free to take whatever courses you want to take as long as you're kind of matching up with one of the tracks but what you'll find is that a lot of the classes kind of overlap anyway so you don't need to be too worried if you don't know what track you're on super early on because as you pick and choose classes you will end up on at least one of them. How slash where do you apply and any prerequisites? I'll put a link to the website in the description and pinned comment but you basically just go to this website and there is a little tab that says apply and it'll give you all the information for applying there. There are some prerequisites but they're very loose prerequisites. On the 
website, you'll see that it asks for a college level course or equivalent knowledge in probability slash statistics, computer programming in Python or calculus and basic linear algebra. I did have all of this, but I did not have linear algebra. I never took linear algebra. So I had to do a lot of self-studying over the summer before my program. As long as you have some course that kind of covers the basic knowledge that they're asking for, you should be okay. If you're worried about a credit that you have not working, you can always reach out and ask about it. More than likely, as long as you have something that kind of matches the description, you should be okay. It's more about just making sure that you're doing the work that you need to do to catch up before the program starts and justifying your knowledge for these topics outside of taking a literal course for it would also be great in your application. But truthfully, it doesn't matter too much. The only thing is that you might struggle a little bit more if you don't have the prior knowledge. But as long as you're working really hard to keep up and learn the content, you should be okay. Just keep in mind that it might be a little more challenging if you don't have the background knowledge. Tips on time management and burnout. This is a great question. Those of you that watch my videos regularly, you've probably seen that I have had my ups and downs with this program. I have gotten like very, very overwhelmed at times. My biggest piece of advice for you to manage your time is just to just work ahead. Work as far ahead as you can. For me personally, I feel like it was a little bit easier to work ahead in the in-person program just because you kind of get everything. Like you don't have to wait for something to be released. For the online program, a lot of the time the modules are locked until a specific date. So you have to wait in order for something to open before you can start working on it. And that's a little bit tough for me because I like to work ahead. Keep up with all your deadlines, write everything down, plan everything out for your week. I recently started using Notion to write all my stuff down because it just helps me so much. I used to have a physical agenda, but honestly it got to the point where like I needed to view my agenda at all times. <laughs> so Notion was nice because I could view it on like every device, like my phone, computer, iPad. Find a way to keep up with your deadlines that works for you and just stick to it. Burnout is very real. The way that I try to avoid getting burnt out is that one day a week usually, I will do literally no work. Whenever you feel like you've gotten to a point where you can't focus, it's hard for you to just even like think about work. Take a day, pull back and just relax. Obviously this is harder to do when you're in person, but since online is asynchronous, you have a little more flexibility to kind of do what you want. I would recommend just like taking that time to relax when you need it because most days I'm just doing work the full day. So it does get tough sometimes. So just try to find that time for yourself and also just work as far ahead as you can because trust me, you will thank yourself so much in the long run if you work ahead. Do you think it would be possible to do this degree a class at a time while working? Yes, absolutely. Most people in the online cohort are full-time employees that are just also trying to get their degree at the same time. So it's very doable. It's just that it's a lot of work. So obviously you have to put a good bit of effort into it. Is that sh f is one of the questions I got asked. <laughs> I just thought this question was really funny, honestly. Uh, it can be. Sometimes, yeah. I've gotten some pretty crazy grades. <laughs> like, and I'm like, oh my God, like why am I still in this program? Everything challenging you can think of in a master's program, it is exactly that, like a hundred percent. So just be ready, it's really tough. But at the same time, you have to remember that that is a good thing. Think of it from the lens of like, if you're in a master's program and everything is easy for you, then you're probably in the wrong master's program. I've been pushed and challenged so much this year and I've learned so much because of it. And so it's very challenging and sometimes I cry. <laughs> Like, you know, I guess my answer to your question is kind of, yeah. Social scene. For the online one, I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory. Everything's online, everything's async, so it's not as social, but I have met a lot of really cool people though. I've met a lot of people in the online cohort through my different projects and stuff that I actually really, really like. And so, I don't know, I've like, I've kind of liked it. I feel like you can still kind of connect with people. I found out recently that one girl in my program that I'm working on a team with goes to the same nail salon as me, which is like so insane. We were talking about hanging out sometime soon. So it's like, you can definitely meet people in the online cohort as well, especially if they're in your area. As for the in-person program, they do have a lot of events for in-person students and I remember them being like super cute and super fun. If you're in the in-person program, definitely take advantage of those events. They do have a lot of them. Like I feel like there was always an event going on. They do a really good job of keeping it social in the in-person program. Would you recommend this program? I would. I think that if you're looking for a technical degree that's beyond your bachelor's degree and you're looking for a challenge, you're looking to be pushed, I think this is a great opportunity for you. Georgia Tech is awesome. I've been here for a really long time now, so I'm a really big advocate for going to school here. So yeah, Yes, I would absolutely recommend this program. All right, guys, that is all the time I have for questions today. Thank you guys so much for sending in your questions. Also, I was not expecting to get that many, so that made me really happy to see. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any more questions that I didn't answer or if you end up applying or if you have any questions about the application process or anything like that, please feel free to comment down below. I would be more than happy to help and give you guys some more information if you need it. But that's all I have for this week. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next Saturday with another video. So until then, bye.